blogging means for me as a person, me as Elaine Fuentes, ang dali lang yan. Kasi there are experiences I've had in the 40-some years that I've been alive on earth. And sometimes, um, upo ako, susulatin ko siya, tapos I would have pictures, I would have, you know, moments of creativity. And I need to put it out there because it helps me as a person. Uh, re retrospection. And I have my own blog. Okay, paplag ko na. Uh, the storyteller it's about people I've met along the way people that who have made a mark and uh, feelings that I felt before that have made an impact on me and my purpose for blogging wanting to share it with other people who may have had similar experiences and may learn the way that I did blogging is basically just another avenue or bubble form ng uh, pagpapahayag ng opinion ng isang tao o ng isang nito. Ito ay mas lalo naging accessible nung nagkaroon ng mga blog sites na libre. Pwede siyang magkaroon ng overlapping because as we all know, may mga journalists na nagbablog at mayroong mga bloggers na umaakto na parang mga journalists. Para lang maging maliwanag, blogger din ako and I'm also, in, excuse me, a journalist. So I, I know both worlds. At nung bagong uh, sibol lamang ang vlogging, naging kaibigan ko yung mga pangunahing vloggers before. Ngayon, I think what you're trying to get at is uh, kasi naging controversial yung pagkakaroon ng pagtatalo tungkol sa source of news. Ano ba yung dapat na maging source of news? Ang journalists ba? Ang uh, news organizations ba? O ang bloggers? Since both are available on the internet. Uh, bubuwagin ko yung awayan na yan kasi in the first place, hindi ako naniniwala that everything you read and you hear, you should believe no matter where it comes from. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it comes from a blog or if it comes from a certain network or a certain website. You have to be wise enough to decipher which is which. Kasi eventually, the choices that you're going to make are going to come from who you believe. Okay? Ang mga true journalists, ang currency niyan, ang alam niya na lengguahe is information. So, information, any kind, is good as a lead. Okay? Pero hindi ibig sabihin may information, good na siya kaagad. Doon, lumilitaw yung training ng mga totoong journalist. Ibig sabihin ay, nagkakaroon ng determination at ng verification if a certain information is true or not, or how true it is. Kasi, merong mga information na 100% true. Merong mga information na 80% true. Merong information na 50% true. And, unfortunately, there are information that is or that are 1% true. Okay, we live in a democratic society, so everybody is entitled to their opinion and they are entitled to express their own opinion, but as a matter of rights, okay, I always say, saan ba yung rights? Kasi yung rights mo, may nakakabit yan, may kakambal na responsibility yan, hindi pwede puro rights lang. Pagka in-exercise mo yung rights mo, meron kang responsibility. Ngayon, ang tanong sa akin, um, saan natatapos o saan yung hangganan ng isang rights? Ang, ang sagot ko standard lagi, my right or my privilege ends where another person's begin. Ibig sabihin, yung karapatan ko, natatapos yan kapag ka meron na akong matatapakang tao. Kasi hindi pwede yung karapatan ko, i-exercise ko, tatapakan ko. Yung karapatan naman, nagkapwa ko tao. So, yun yung boundary. Nung pag may tinapakan ako, karapatan ng iba, that's it. And that goes for political bloggers as well. Maraming opinion dyan at saka believe it or not, well, you can believe it kasi it's been said that the president, the current president of the Republic of the Philippines won by virtue of 
social media campaigns. He did not utilize the mainstream media, pero he was very active or his supporters were very active sa social media and it was all political. So that is the power of uh, the digital age, specifically uh, blogging. Absolutely. Or your site site. Because like I mentioned earlier, uh, broadcasters, journalists, and media people, ang currency namin is information. So, sa unang tingin, kapag ka merong information na inilatag dyan, we cannot immediately judge unless yung for the very obvious, no? Alam mo, sinabi nila patay yung si Duterte, alam mo naman hindi pa patay, di ba? So, yung may mga gamay obvious. Pero there are, there are times that we need to really look at the information. And if the source, the initial source, is not verifiable, then we need to find other sources to verify and confirm. And, um... To see if there's anything to the, to the initial information. Hindi naman kasi sa broadcasting, kasi sa journalism, hindi lang isa ang source mo. You are a failure if you get your your information from one source. You get it from one source and then you find a way to verify it using other uh, credible sources. Bakit tinatanggap na? Well, because there have been some, like for example, uh, maraming mga columnists ngayon na dati makikita mo lang sila sa mga pahayagan. Pero now, they put their columns in the blog. Kaya siya kinukuhang sources, you need to look at the person, you need to look at the motivation, you need to look at the affiliation before you can actually see the clarity that is contained within the information. Both good and bad. Doon muna tayo sa good. Like I said, our currency is information. The more information there is, mas masaya kami. Okay? Um, yung mga dati na information na hindi naman nakakalabas, ngayon, nadadapot mo na. Dati, you have to go, like for example, if there's information in Sultan Kudarat, you have to go to Sultan Kudarat. Right now, there's a blogger with access to the information, no matter if he's in Timbuktu, you can still access that particular information. So that's the good side, access immediacy, it's there. Availability. Bad side, um, yung tinatawag na information overload. Sometimes, uh, masyado ng maraming information na nilalabas dyan. It's so hard to filter out which is true, which is not. Especially, if the truthfulness percentage is diluted. There is no such thing as fake news. Um, there is misinformation, there is malinformation, but there's no such thing as fake news. Okay? Um, yung ano yung misinformation? Meron kang inilabas na information na mali, nagkamali. Okay? Pero pwedeng kakulangan, pwedeng nalito. Misinformation, um, pwedeng hindi sinasadya. Yung malinformation, mal meaning bad, sinadya yun yun yung talagang kinutwist mo yung mga bagay-bagay para mailabas mo doon yung hindi tama. Hindi siya veritable information. Now, paano makakatulong sa naging issue sa mga blog sites? Well, ang pwede ko lang sabihin yan, and this is going to sound a little snobbish, okay? Each one of us is equipped with a brain, Okay? Um, each one of us is equipped, I hope, with common sense, with reason, with logic. So, kahit yan ay uh, balik tayo, um, throwback Thursday tayo na about 30 years ago, may mga nagpapalabas yan yung form ng vlogging before po. Ito, okay, mga bibigyan na ganyan, merong tumpukan sa kanto. Yun yung form nun. Ngayon, na-digitize na lang. Naging nasa computer na, easier na, mas mabilis na. Pero, the answer to that is for all of us to start really thinking clearly, to be open-minded, but to be very, very cautious about what we hear, what we read, and what is told to us. Nagbula sa web blogging, ang terminong blogging. Blogging ay isang pagsasalaysay ng isang individual sa isang website tungkol sa mga pangyayari o mga balita. Ito ay naganap sa kasalukuyang panahon 
kalin sabay ng pagusbong ng social media. Ang karaniwang isinasulat ng isang blogger ay hango lamang sa sariling opinion, mga personal na karanasan at mungkahing solusyon sa mga isyong tinatalakan. Ang political blogging ay ang pagpapahayag ng sariling pananaw o opinion tungkol sa mga nagaganap na may kinalaman sa politika. Kadalasan ay mayroong mga pinapanigan at ine-endorse ang tao o kabaligtaran. Ang mga sumusunod ay ang mga bentahe ng blogging. Una, mas accessible ito sa mga mambabasa. Pangalawa, mabibigyan ng ibang angulo o perspektibo ang isang storya. Pangatlo, mas madali sa isang blogger na mapahayag ng impormasyon. Pangapat, ang komunikasyon sa publiko ay hindi limitado. At panghuli, madaling malaman ng isang mambabasa kung may bago bang post ang sinusubaybayan niyang blog. Disbentahe o disadvantage ng blog. Ayon sa artikulo ni Emily Bell, mayroong mga disbentahe o disadvantage na dinadala ang pagkusbong ng blog bilang sanggunian ng balita. Una dito ay madali na lamang na mapapalitan ng mga manunulat ang nalalaman nila tungkol sa artikulo o hindi masyadong accurate ang nilalaman. Pangalawa, walang journalistic standards. Pangatlo, hindi tumadaan sa guide post. At pang-apat, kahit sino na lamang ay maaaring mag-post at ipahayag ito bilang lehito ng basita. Isa sa itinuturing na malaking disbentahe ng blogging, ang pagiging source nito ng fake news sa social media. Tumutukoy ito sa mga balitang peke, inimbento at mula sa hindi mapagkakatiwala ang source. Maaaring bunga ito ng propaganda ng ilang political bloggers o di kaya naman bunga ng kapabayaan at katamaran ng ilang mamamahayag sa paghahanap ng reliable sources. Maaari pang magdulot ang fake news, ang kalituhan at misinformasyon sa publiko. Journalist, ito ang mga maaaring solusyon. Una, proseso ng pag-verify at cross-checking ng sources. Pangalawa, pagsunod sa code of ethics ng isang journalist. Pangatlo, pagpapanatili ng accuracy ng katotohanan. Pangapat, tumalik sa tradisyonal na pamamaraan ng journalist o pagkakaroon ng guide proseso ng fact-checking. Panglima, alam dapat ang duty sa publik. Bilang mga babasa, dapat ay maging mapanuri. Huwag tanggap ng tanggap ng impormasyon o tingnan mabuti ang mga lahat ng binabasa at maging critical sa mga binabasa. Muntik na akong mahulo. At ang ganda pa na pagkakasimula ako. Hindi ka pala totoo. Mag-ingat ka!